This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. Richard Linklater's films work like puzzle pieces, that instead of feeling like a piece that has been cut up, is instead a single picture being created one piece at a time. Whether it be something like the Before Trilogy, a trilogy that lasted from 1995 to 2013 where each movie was shot and took place in nine year intervals, or something like Boyhood, a film that tracks the life of one family over the course of 12 years. Your initial assumption could be that he's a filmmaker obsessed with time, and he is if we're speaking about those two pieces of work, but he's more than anything a filmmaker obsessed with pieces and finding connection within those pieces. Whether they be characters, events, years, he's a master at finding a story in singular individual ideas. To a lot of people, what I'm about to say always comes as a surprise, but when I look at his work from that lens, it makes total sense that he is the filmmaker behind the 2003 classic School of Rock. School of Rock is a blockbuster comedy about Dewey Finn, a failed rock and roll musician who disguises as a substitute teacher to make some extra cash, only to turn his class into a rock band. For a a film whose main subject is a genre of music that unfortunately sounds a little outdated at this point, this film has aged like fine wine. I think about School of Rock more than I should because it's such a brilliant and entertaining piece of filmmaking and even at 22 years old I still find a way to lose myself in it. I think if there's one scene that really highlights this film's brilliance, one scene that in a sense represents what this film is attempting to accomplish as a whole, it's this one. The scene clocks in at just a little over seven minutes, and they're in a way the most crucial seven minutes of the film. At this point in the film, which by the way is about 20 minutes in, Link later needs to do a lot of things for us to be on board for the rest of the movie. Those things are building a community, building individuality, creating leadership, and promise. So the scene starts with a long shot, something that is crucial to how this scene works. It begins with a question. Mr. S, what's going on? Followed by a three beat rise from Dewey. I heard you in music class. You guys can really play. And it ends. Why didn't anyone tell me? You. In a release. What's your name? Now that we have tension yeah. and a sense of energy, we get right into yeah. business, okay, forming okay. the band. Now Zach is the closest thing we have as a lead for the band, the real lead being Dewey, of course. Zach is the character that has the most satisfying arc out of the kids, so they need to make this first interaction count. A subtle technique used to create a mirror effect is giving Zach a bright tone guitar with clothes that are darker, leaving Jack Black with the opposite. This subtlety suggests they complete each other, making for a great duo right off the bat. Zach's guitar being in a lower note and looking more modern, not to ignore the fact that he's a child, immediately gives off the student-teacher dynamic, but in a way that suggests that the student is the more important figure here. To create a sense of control, they cut to a low angle of Dewey, the music now in complete control. Notice the same angle for Zach, once again practicing the mirror effect. As these shots go back and forth quicker, Dewey's energy rises, Zach's performance grows more refined, and just like that, we have our first member. Next we have Lawrence. This may seem subtle, but Dewey's gentler voice tone says a lot about how he acts differently depending on which student he's talking to. This is a great example okay. of how the film right, distinguishes enough. one kid from another because, me, okay? let's face it, Dewey let's would never talk like that to Freddy. Account, it, in a sense, creates individuality. Yeah. The composition of the shot has yes. Lawrence in the foreground, but closes in on Dewey. They do this because there's a certain realization in this shot. Knowing Zach wasn't a single gifted student, we see a talent in front of Dewey, that talent being Lawrence, that he helped bring to life. It's a moment in the film where Dewey realizes he has a sense of leadership. The energy rises, and just like that, two members are down. You're perfect. Stay right there, okay? You, could you come up here please? Now we follow Katie. Katie is a lot quieter What's than the name? other two members, but Katie. just as essential Katie, as she's the, the one teaching the Dewey what a cello is. Cello. Okay, keep that G coming all day long. Him matching G the G, G note G gives G them G chemistry, G and just like stuff. that we have a third Are there member. any drummers in the house? Lastly, he asks for a drummer, the first time someone has to volunteer themselves. Play anything else. Shut up. Come here, dude. What does it say that Freddy is the one to speak up first? It says a lot about his character. Just see if you can do what I do, okay? Just give it a try. Okay, give that a try. We zoom in on Freddy, cut right to the chase, and let the music take control of the camera. Okay! 
It doesn't take a lot to introduce Freddy, clearly, but the film's choice of ending on him is crucial, as it shows that Dewey having to calm down a student proves his method of teaching is working. Lastly, we have the final shot of this sequence. All one shot, no cutting. We start with Lawrence, the same angle from before, then move to Katie with the same gesture. We add some humor with Freddy to prevent things from being too perfect, and then bring in symbols to build us into tying things up with Zack, the first member. Dewey's energy rises higher than ever to match the excitement, and just like that, we have a band, a community, and based on their skill, we have promise. So in just 4 minutes and 20 seconds, we go from a group of kids who are pretty much indistinguishable from one another to a pretty cohesive band. This is what I mean when I say Linklater works in pieces, each of these single shots without any cutting being those pieces. Before this scene, as Dewey yells at them upon entering, the Jack Black delivery feels separate from the students, but the dialogue and responses following this initial practice feel more engaged, as though everyone is in tune, no pun intended. So let's back it up a bit. Now School of Rock loosely follows a hero's journey arc. It's not completely out there in terms of structure, but you could argue for a lot of scenes that they don't necessarily move the story forward. I'd argue they do. They may not be plot points or scenes that directly rely on what came before them, but they do build the characters. I'll put it this way, pretend one scene is Lawrence, a band member, and rather than building a band, Linklater is building a satisfying ending to the film, because I think if we can all agree on one thing, it's that the ending of this film kicks ass. Well, what is that ending, though? Well, technically, and this would make a lot of sense, it's a singular piece of art, a performance. It's a performance with lights and costumes and music, etc. School of Rock, in a way, is examining what makes for a satisfying piece of art through the structure in which it tells the story, a structure that mirrors this first scene that I talked about. So then what are these pieces that come together to create this piece of art? Well, let's run through some examples. This scene, where Dewey quizzes them on iconic rock stars, it represents understanding past work as a means of producing new work. The Legend of the Rent song is about the financial burden that comes with being an artist. This scene tackles finding anger and passion as a means of using that to create art. It also tackles finding your unique voice. The scenes with the principal address the convincing required to sometimes get an idea approved of or most of the time funded as an artist. And now, of course, there are scenes sprinkled in here and there that move the plot forward and give reasons to certain choices, but if the film were only those scenes, it'd be about an hour and 20, whereas right now it's an hour and 50. When you zoom out and look at the scenes in this film, they are really just a collection of ideas strung together by an entertaining premise that was perfectly established in that scene. But why does this matter? Why would this story work so well in this structure? Well, I guess this is where you start to analyze what the central theme of School of Rock is, and to me it's collaboration. Whether it's a teacher and their students, students with other students, parents and their children, Ned and Patty, the principal and the rest of the faculty, Dewey and his old band. When you boil it down, this film is really about relationships. It's a story about art and how it plays a role in the way we connect to people and in the way we understand people. The energy in this specific scene can't be topped throughout the rest of the movie because the level of pride from everyone involved is, in a way, at its peak. In so many stories, whenever there is a teacher-student dynamic, the growth always seems a little out of balance as the student is growing the most. But in this scene, we see Dewey, a quote-unquote teacher, realizing his skills for the first time, doing something he loves and is good at for the first time, as the student recognizes their skills as well. It's a very pure moment that through great performances, cinematography, and I guess a lack of editing kicks off the film. If there's one cheesy thing to take away from School of Rock that isn't a catchy song that'll be stuck in your head for the rest of the day, it's that sometimes great art can't happen alone, but instead is only possible with the help from those around you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and this school isn't the only thing that rocks. In fact, if there's one thing that rocks a little bit more, it's this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace, if you didn't know, is a place where you can go to build a website to take that idea that you've had and turn it into something bigger. I just graduated, I know, I know. And that required me making a website and preparing for the real world, and let me tell you, Squarespace made that process so easy. While at the same time making the website look pretty good, because thanks to a wide array of award-winning designer templates, they got what you need. Plus, if website building seems a little intimidating, don't worry, they have 24-hour customer service. It's helped out my mom, it's helped out me, it's helped out friends, it'll help out you. And the best part about it all is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. Thank you, Squarespace, once again for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.